Now the sun is just starting to climb up over the treetops And it's gonna be a beautiful day, that's plain to see Welcome to Bill Dance Outdoors, America's most popular and longest-running TV fishing show. Now I've gone fishing with Bill Dance today. Kind of gave up on them, didn't you? Okay, come back there and get you, old boy. Easy does it. That's a nice one. Look at that. Yes, sir. Fat, too. Ta -ta. Hello everybody, we're going to have some fun today, catch a few fish, I hope, and we're going to cast out some very interesting things you might not be aware of, and also answer some emails we've recently received, like this one right here. I heard that an eight and a half inch bass has the ability to expand its jaws and swallow shad that measures over three and a half inches. And that same bass can eat another bass that's four and three quarter inches long, well over half its own length. As a bass grows larger, it becomes even more adept at consuming prey like shad and other species with streamlined body profiles. For instance, a 22 and a half inch bass, approximately seven pounds, can swallow another bass almost 14 inches in length, weighing right at a pound and a half. That's hard to believe, but it is a fact. Now here are the standard lengths and weights for a largemouth bass. Well, looking at this chart, you can get some standard weights for a largemouth bass. An 8-inch bass should weigh around 5 ounces. 12-inch should weigh around 14 ounces. Moving on down the chart, 17-inch bass should weigh around 2 pounds and 12 ounces. A 21-inch around five pounds and six ounces, where a 23 inch fish should weigh just a shade under seven and a quarter pounds. Now these weights are intended to serve as optimum goals. In practice, standard weights may vary by regions according to lengths of growing seasons, elevations, water quality, type of forage, and other limiting factors. There he is. in that treetop, weren't you? Come up here, boy, boy. There we go. Nice. Let's go right back down in there, okay? You know, you hear professionals and you're reading articles all the time about water temperature being the most important factor in determining where fish will be. Well, are they talking about surface temperature? Well, you know, taking the surface temperature is important, but most importantly, all it does is gives you a starting point. Now, most good fishermen like to have a surface temp gauge on their boat or graph because they can easily keep an eye on it for abrupt and noticeable changes. When these areas are seen, it's then best to use one of the many available electronic hand units that work by lowering a probe into the water to quickly check the temperature at various depths. Bottom to mid-range temperatures are much more important than surface temperatures, assuming there's an adequate supply of dissolved oxygen there, especially during the summer months. Now, a few degrees can make a world of difference. 
Bill Dance Outdoors is sponsored in part by Rebel, Catch Fish Anywhere, Bass Pro Shops, Your Adventure Starts Here, and Mercury Marine, number one on the water. We are the wanderers. We are the ones who go out amongst the trees to get back to our roots. The ones with rivers flowing in our veins and an internal compass that always points toward the great outdoors. It's all within reach. Ascend. Gear for the adventure in you. Available at Bass Pro Shops and other fine retailers. Radical unibody construction. Precision machined to the tightest of tolerances. The new quantum throttle with real engine design blows the doors off any reel in its glass. Anywhere with Rebel. Today's conditions log is brought to you by the Tennessee Department of Tourist Development. Come experience the kind of beauty that can only be made in Tennessee. Go online today for your free Tennessee vacation guide. Nice fish there. Come here, Buster. Easy does it. There we go. You liked that too, didn't you? Three times. Hey, bye bye. Okay, now let's talk about natural or unnatural. Here's something I'd like to know. Why are so many lure manufacturers painting lures with fluorescent colors? Aren't lures supposed to represent the fish's natural food? Fluorescent colors offer the advantage of being highly visible in certain water clarities and at different times of day and depths they're fished. Anytime you can help a fish find your lure by visibility, sound, or whatever, you're going to have a much better chance of catching it. Good fish. Hey, now, boy. All right, we're coming up, we're coming up into the boat, old boy. You hooked on the outside of the face, inside of the face. How in the world are you hooked? You unhook now. I know you've been asked this question lots of times, Bill, but why are so many big bass caught on slow lures? Two reasons. Big bass are not tailored to long pursuits, meaning they don't do the 100-yard dash to catch their prey. Secondly, and perhaps most important, is limited strike speed. Now, researchers at Florida State studied largemouth bass to determine how increasing body size affected jaw physiology and feeding behavior. Although jaw structure increases proportionately as size increases, larger bass open and close their mouths slower than smaller bass. This produces a slower overall strike speed in larger fish. Now according to research, the strike of a five pound bass takes 50% longer than that of a one pound bass. Strike speed continues to decrease as bass size increases. Based on this study, when fishing for large bass, it might be smart to wait a second or two before setting the hook. So I'm going to show you a ledge right here with a lot of bait suspended right off the edge of it. 
All right, right here, we got six feet of water, five to six feet of water right here. And right along the edge of this five to six, most of these fish are using, like I say, four to six, seven feet of water, right where it breaks off. Now look at this, look at all this bait right here. See these big balls of bait? They're all along the edge of that drop off. You can see it right there again, just as I start to come back up. Just a lot of it hanging right off the edge of that ledge, right where it starts to come back up to about six. I'll go right back off the edge of it again. A lot of bait. That's why those fish are right, I think the majority of them are just scattered, like I say, from about four to eight feet. And just as I start to drop off again, there's the bait again. See those big balls of bait right there? Today's show is sponsored in part by Quantum Rods and Reels, fishing at a quantum level. Mystic Lubricants, lubrication domination. And Tracker Boats, fish the finest. Today's equipment log is brought to you in part by Gamakatsu, because the fish of a lifetime only comes once in a lifetime. Tracker Boats, America's number one selling fishing boats, recognized for high customer satisfaction ratings from its owners, brings you the Tracker Promise, the best factory warranty in aluminum boats, a bow to stern warranty for five years, plus a limited lifetime structural and deck warranty. And there's more, because at the end of the day, it's not just a boat, it's a tracker. Fuel efficiency you can rely on. It's good to have Mercury behind you. Mercury engine tap. Smooth, quiet power you can rely on. It's good to have Mercury behind you. We are the wanderers. We are the ones who go out amongst the trees to get back to our roots the ones with rivers flowing in our veins and an internal compass that always points toward the great outdoors. It's all within reach. Ascend, gear for the adventure in you. Available at Bass Pro Shops and other fine retailers. Today's show is sponsored in part by Gamakatsu, world's finest hooks. Grand Slam Mono and Bray, Big Fish Tough for when the money's on the line. And by Garmin, fight your fish, not your fish finder. Yes, right there. Stay wide. He swallowed that thing. Man, yeah, Buster. I'm here, baby. You got it. Woo! Get the pliers to get that. There we go.
is a head-on take when the fish is coming directly at you. And I mean he's just moving, I mean just coming on at you. I mean that's the most difficult time. The tendency is to pull the lure or the bait out of its mouth. Now, if you can, I'll say that again. If you can, let the fish grab your offering and then wait a few seconds to see if he turns before you strike. Like I say, it's hard to do. It is really hard to do. If you can't wait, sweep the rod sideways instead of straight up and try to drive the hook into the corner of his mouth. Okay, here's one about monofilament line. I've heard you say that knot failure Got it all the way down. He had ate the whole thing. I'll come up here. Big old mouth. Open up. Morning. How you doing? The Bill Dance Question and Answer of the Week is brought to you by Mystic Lubricants and their complete line of JT4 Marine products. A full line of products for your full line of pursuits. Visit mysticlube.com today. Now here's a question you'll never ask if you use Defunk. What's that smell? The Defunk family of wipes and sprays kills odors and kills them big time. Cleaning an onion, fish, a cooler, live well, or even your dog and it's environmentally friendly. Defunk eliminates those horrible odors completely. It also removes human scents and enhances your chance of catching more fish. Today's show is sponsored in part by Orca Coolers, the all-American everywhere product, and Motor Guide, Trolling motors engineered for anglers. Closed captioning is provided by Bill Dance Digital. Follow us. We are the wanderers. We are the ones who go out amongst the trees to get back to our roots. The ones with rivers flowing in our veins and an internal compass that always points toward the great outdoors. It's all within reach. Ascend. Gear for the adventure in you. Available at Bass Pro Shops and other fine retailers. People around here learn at an early age the value of good work ethic and a hard earned dollar. His grandpa told him buy once, buy right, buy American made. You get what you pay for. We couldn't agree more. After all, he stands for American values. Why shouldn't his coolers? Orca coolers. American labor, American components, made in the USA. Let's get down to business. Quiet, you sons of fishes. Now, what? I, I'm switching sonar. Why? Because uh, now I can see fish swimming live in front of my boat. I, I, I even see fish attack my lure. Y'all sonar is just history. I'm out. I'm with him.
Today's product tip is brought to you by Garmin's new Echo Map series of chart plotter sonar combos. These awesome push button units provide the clearest scanning sonar images on the water. Don't you just hate to have trolling motor problems? And they always seem to occur when the fish are biting. I mean just simple things, like a motor that runs your batteries down quickly. Well, I've got one on my boat that extends battery life up to five times beyond its normal capacity. Now, that's just one of the many things I like about my trolling motor. If you're looking for the latest fishing information and tips, be sure to check out the free Bill Dance mobile app, available for both iOS and Android users. That's nice. Better one. You can see big old boy. I'm gonna have to come back there to the console to get you. Easy. That is a good bait. Yes, it is. Nice fish. Okay. Ta ta. Woo! Boy, he hammered it. All those ribs. Moves a lot of water. Crawfish tails. They like it. Yes, they do. I had a fella ask me recently why do you palm your bait casting reel instead of holding it by the handle? You know, well, I personally find that palming or cupping the reel side plate directly with my left hand creates much better sensitivity for me. Also, when I'm fighting a fish, it gives me a lot more power and it doesn't tire my wrist. This allows me a lot more control of the fish. Holding the handle puts a lot of pressure, like right here, it puts a lot of pressure on your wrist when a fish lunges or when, he, or when I'm trying to either pull him up from cover or keep him out from it. In other words, right here. See, like this, and by palming the reel, I've got a lot better control right here. I can put the butt of the rod into my stomach or into my, right here. I can let it play against my forearm like this as he lunges or goes down. And by, by keeping the, the palming plate up here and locking it in here, like I said, I've got a whole lot more sensitivity. These palming plates are real small, very smooth, and they fit right into your hand right there. See that little, how small the palming plate is? You just catch it right here. Lock your hand right around it. It's so much better than trying to hold the reel way back here, locking it around here. Just catch it right here, lock your hand right around it right there. That way you've got much better control. Well, that's a good one. Took there, big boy. Going easy with you. Oh, the blimp. Strong fish, too. Alright, come here. Oh, what a nice one. Old fat fish. Nice. Let's go home. Ready? Woo. Well, like I said, today's been fun, and we've managed to catch some mighty nice fish on a good old bait. And we've cast out some interesting stuff that we hope that you might use to help you catch a big old bass. I sure hope so anyway. Until next time, you catch a lot of fish, keep what you can use, and release the rest. We'll see you next time.
Thanks for watching Bill Dance Outdoors. Please join us right here again next week. Now I've gone fishing with Bill Dance today.